So this is all Cliff Walk, and that's Land's End, the big house, where we used to live for years. And this whole property was eight and a half acres. And now we have three acres. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Victoria Mealy. Welcome to Newport. I can't wait to show you around my home and introduce you to my family. My parents owned this entire property. They bought it in 1952. And um, after my father died, my mother sold Land's End in 1957 and moved over here to what was the gardener's cottage. This was still an eight car garage. Um, and then in 1968, she attached the two houses. Uh, my husband and I bought Land's End back in 1989 from the, the people who had it then and we lived there for 30 years and when she passed away in 2018 we sold that house and moved over here this house and especially this room is a little bit of a mishmash of her things my things from next door and every house i've ever lived in so it's quite an eclectic collection I'm Nick Mealy. I'm her favorite son. Um, I'm a professional photographer, um, and uh, I've grown up coming here my entire life. Um, and now I get to bring my wife and two kids here to enjoy Newport. And to make his mother crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new book out uh, called The Newport Summer. Um, it is a uh, coffee table book uh, available everywhere, and it's kind of uh, 20 years of me uh, photographing here over the summers, uh, people, parties, houses, details, lifestyle, um, everything, uh, dogs, um, like my beautiful dog Lola here, um, and um, it's uh, kind of um, Slim Aarons-esque uh, summer in Newport, really June, July, August, September. My mother, Marion Oates Leiter Charles, was one of the grand dames of Newport. People called her Oatsy, and she made everyone feel uh, like they were the only one in the room. She did. You know, which is one of her, her, her many talents. She was brought up to, uh, mainly probably because she was from the South, um, she was brought up to entertain and amuse and, you know, and be smart and be able to talk on a great variety of subjects. She was great friends with Jack Kennedy, with Nancy Reagan. Um, the list goes on and on. She uh, sat next to uh, Prince Charles at a dinner. On oh, she told him he was a hell of a prince at the end of the dinner. He absolutely loved her. She had incredible wit and would say anything to anyone. And people sort of just flocked to her. And uh, she was very big on the social scene in Washington for many years knew all the presidents and all the politicians and and led sort of a fascinating life. I mean, she once said to me, you realize you grew up knowing people that other people only read about in books. And that was true. She was a very, um, a very interesting person. I was scared of her for the majority of my childhood. She wasn't, you know, very child friendly. Um, it wasn't until I uh, hit college and in, in my 20s that I really got to um, appreciate her. Um, and she also taught me that you can get really far with a good sense of humor and being charming. Um, you know, it's kind of like that Oscar Wilde quote, um, it's ridiculous to divide people into good or bad. People are either charming or tedious. It's just always been my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, guess I, I guess I'm an intellectual snob. I don't really care where you came from or what you do as long as you're interesting. This was an eight car garage where we're standing right now. Um, and the other side of the house, which you'll see later, was the gardener's cottage. In 68, she connected the two houses and she turned this part into the library, uh, office, and this living room. The main furniture was hers, except for these two wonderful black lacquer pieces. 
I have a thing about stuffed birds, which I absolutely love. And I bought those peacocks at an auction here in Newport and ordered some plastic greenery from Amazon and stuck them in those stands and attached everything. So all these pictures on either side of the fireplace were our collection of interiors of places we've lived. The bottom one was my living room in Washington. Uh, the middle one, my living room next door at Land's End. And the top one was her library in Washington. Well, this is, oh, this is uh, the four-year-old loves this because he put the whole collection of crabs every time he sees them he puts them all in the box and he thinks that's great fun but um it's just these have always been on this table wait hold on this is a perfect chance for me to plug my book <laughs> um because i took the uh interior uh pages right from this fabric i took a photo and so it's all matching. Uh, this has been here since 1968. And it's really held up remarkably well. It's one of the few things that isn't frayed and shredded. <laughs> we bring shabby chic to a whole new level. <laughs> this picture was by Howard Cushing, who was a very well-known painter who lived right across the way. This was my great grandmother's or my grandmother's piano from Alabama and she was a composer and a harpist. Originally there was a man in Newport who was a, one of her best friends called Thomas Hagerman and he helped her design the whole thing but she pretty much you know the, he got the stuff, you know, she, she always knew exactly what she wanted. I mean the, all of this paneling which came out of the Elms, which is one of the preservation society houses. It was stuck up in the attic and they hadn't been using it. And she bought it all and pretty much designed the rooms around it. I don't believe in having, you know, children and dogs around and not letting them sit in the furniture or touch anything. I think a house is meant to be lived in and enjoyed. And that, hence, you know, chintz is the most wonderful thing. And anything with a pattern that can be thrown up on or pooped on and it doesn't matter. <laughs> the first summer, I rehung all of the paintings she had here. And I had, you know, I mean, that was a, that's a colossal house next door. And so it, it, it had, you know, 10 bedrooms and it was probably 12,000 square feet. And I really liked all my paintings. And so I brought all mine over. And that first summer, I hung 300 paintings all over the house. I might add, without a ruler, <laughs> just by eye. Um, and, but it was really satisfying. You know, I, I like walls that are well covered. My wife often comments it's like uh, coming to summer camp almost because you know, the more things change everywhere else, the more they stay the same here. And um, you come back and you pick up right where you left off and you kind of leave your worries uh, at the door. Unless you have an old house and everything's leaking and cracking. <laughs> <laughs> My mother didn't do anything since 1968. So it's every time I turn around, you know, the, the other day the toilet was leaking into the front hall. It's. <laughs> She named the house The Whim, which quite frankly, I've never liked. Um, but for lack of a better name, here it is. And Why so did she name it that? I have, I've never quite known, actually. And I forgot to ask her, which is one of the many things I forgot to ask her. Um, but this, the whole house is a, it's a combination of things from her house in Washington, things that stayed here, uh, things I brought over from next door and every other place I've ever lived. So it's very much sort of an eclectic combination of just things that I like a lot. And I had a lot of paintings and she had quite a lot of paintings and I sold a lot of hers and hung a lot of mine. I kept these wonderful um, dolphin tables, which I really don't know anything about, but um, I've always loved them. The cane stand came from her house in Alabama and Montgomery where she grew up. This painting was painted by the man who built our house in Georgetown, which was a wonderful big house on the corner of 
are in Wisconsin, right across from the Georgetown Public Library. So this is the library. This is one of a number of rooms that are crammed with um, books. Uh, I have a, that's sort of my weakness. And I finally went to Kindle because my house was reaching critical mass. This portrait was painted of me when I was 25 and pregnant with my middle son by a wonderful watercolor artist named Alan Blagden, who lives in Connecticut. And tell them about the cat box in the corner. Oh yeah, the cat, the lovely cat box is in the corner because I have a fabulous Himalayan cat who's hiding from the pit bull upstairs somewhere. And uh, it's, he decided when we first moved back here that he didn't want to use the nice kitty litter box in the bathroom upstairs, but he wanted to go in the corner. So now there's a, <laughs> now there's a kitty litter box in the library. I run a um, Instagram blog with my family called A Social Life, where I'm constantly taking pictures of my wife and my kids in kind of uh, funny, Slim Aarons-esque, Wes Anderson-esque uh, situations. Um, so I definitely remember a photo like that in here. This is the one room that really hasn't changed since she had it, other than pictures, different pictures hung. But this is really exactly the way she decorated it in 1968. She had um, one of the best collections in America, probably, of anti-slavery um, art artifacts and and pictures, and and it's it's really extraordinary. And I've been trying to figure out who to uh, donate it to. Uh, it was during the Kennedy administration, and um, she went to a costume party with. Um, full leotard tights one side was black one side was white and everybody's going what are you she said i'm integration <laughs> i've never heard that story you haven't no. yeah i mean i love this uh oh this the chicken you should definitely get the rooster <laughs> this was the kind of uh, whimsical touches that we both like to add in in the house in washington uh, albert hadley did the house and but it never looked decorated because there were always thousands of books lying around and little objects and, you know, nothing nothing was perfect, but it was lovely. Well, that's the other thing. I photograph a lot of interiors and there's a lot of interiors in, in my book. And to me, it's really important that things aren't overstyled, that they look lived in and they look natural. There's no, nothing I hate more than a room that looks like, you know, a stylist came in and, you know, put everything perfectly where it goes. Like, like we I, did this morning, <laughs> no, before you got here. Well, I think there's curated, uncurated, right? So, you know, uh, just not. I, my goal was just to make it look not like a. We should have a total taken. Mess. We should have taken before and after pictures. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting desk. Um, <clears throat> it originally belonged to Edward the Seventh, and I, somehow my grandfather or great grandfather got a hold of it. I have no idea. So this used to be my grandmother's um, uh, kind of study slash sitting room. Yeah, um, TV room, I mean, library. She basically lived in this room. Um, and one of my favorite um, photos and probably one of my most uh, shared photos is of my grandmother sitting in the corner there. What I, I love is, you know, just in that picture, it's just all the clutter and, um, and how it kind of doesn't look, it's cluttered but doesn't look cluttered. She had books stacked up on the floor, even next, next to her chair, and and she collected Country Life magazines, and you know, it, which comes out once a week, and she never threw out. I told her she was going to end up like the Collier brothers, who were hoarders that died under a huge pile of newspapers, um, <laughs> but they were everywhere. So this is positively zen compared to what it looked like. This was um, her dining room, and it's my, my family room. Uh, this is where we spend the most time. This was a, a painting I picked up in, over here in Nassau about 
30 years ago from a really well-known Bahamian artist named Amos Ferguson who painted with house paint on cardboard. This I absolutely love, which Nick did of my mother when he was at Georgetown and it, in colored pencil. And I quite frankly think it's kind of extraordinary because he got her completely. These were a present from a friend and I just love it's the Wicked Witch. And those are always there? Always. We're gonna go toward the kitchen now. This was sort of our gallery wall of family, pictures of family and friends, and, which Nick very kindly hung for me. This was a photograph of me by Cecil Beaton. Uh, he was photographing it for Vogue, which is this picture here, when I was, I guess I was 17. Um, and he came and, and did a lot of other pictures as well. Apparently I was quite surly and unimpressed, <laughs> according to my mother, if not downright rude. Um, so this kitchen she redid in 1957 when she first moved in. And I don't, haven't decided what I want to do yet. I'm going to knock out some walls. So in the meantime, when I moved in, she had, there was this disgusting old original linoleum floor. So I went on Amazon, I bought $350 worth of black and white sticky tiles and um, glued them down on the floor. I painted the cupboards white and bought red formica for the counters and two black refrigerators and now it's a 50s diner. So might as well go with the theme. <laughs> So I've, it's, it's an impossible kitchen and I kind of like to cook, but I'm, I've been used to it. I mean, it had, until you got to it, it hadn't been updated since the 50s. No, right? it hadn't. Right. I think she bought a new stove once. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the kitchens in Newport are like this. Yeah. I did a um, whole story for a New York Times Magazine on kitchens in Newport and you have these grand, fabulous houses with kitchens that haven't been updated since the 50s because they... Because the owners didn't cook. Yeah, I mean, it was basically, you know, the, the chef. This is a photo I took of my mother in my grandmother's house in D.C. Um, years ago, probably. Yeah, you were in Georgetown. Yeah, I took it probably 10 years ago. Um, a little bit I, longer than that. Favorite, one of my favorite, <laughs> not that <laughs> old. Okay, maybe like 15 years ago. Um, but it's one of my favorite rooms of all time. Um, was it Albert Hadley or was it Sister Albert? Ha uh, Albert, no, it was, no, it was Albert Hadley, and the, Albert you can Hadley. see the carpets there are the ones in the living room. But it's one of my favorite photos and one of my favorite rooms. And I'm thinking of bringing those sofas out of storage. Those are mine as okay, well. Okay, all right, but I'm thinking of bringing them out of Nick's storage that he hasn't <laughs> gone into in ten years, and um, putting them in the living room. So these are very cool. Um, these are all first edition James Bond novels by Ian Fleming, um, signed uh, to my grandmother. Um, this one isn't. But um, she was great friends with Ian Fleming and the, uh, yeah, like that. Um, uh, she was great friends with Ian Fleming and he actually named a character Felix Leiter after uh, my grandfather. and. Um, my grandmother says that she's the reason that James Bond is famous because um, she was great friends with uh, JFK and great friends with Ian Fleming and he, she introduced Ian Fleming to Jack Kennedy and um, when he was still a senator and a couple years later when he was president he um, was asked uh, by a newspaper or a magazine uh, what his favorite novel was and he said James Bond and that's kind of what started the um, the fever for, for James Bond novels. This is my bedroom with my wife, um, who is sitting over here with our dog. I told her she had to be on camera, so I didn't look like a weirdo who lived by myself with my mother. <laughs> um, even though you Some kinda... of that's true. Okay. <laughs> well, let's not eat all the wonderful usually, heirlooms. Well, We've cleaned it up for you guys, but there's usually multiple children in here, Legos all over the floor. Um, I tend to, I mean, I love being in this house just because the, 
the room has, even though it's got these incredible things, incredible, you know, wallpaper and fabrics, it feels still like homey. So when we're in here, I just feel like cozy and comfortable. Um, it doesn't feel stuffy and really. <laughs> I mean, we're um, like a reality show. And I'm sorry. that's um, um, kind of part of what I love. I mean, <laughs> every night I have a kid in my bed, everything. And this one's usually in the bed as well. This is and your third child. This yeah. is, no, this is my third child. This is my that. fourth child. <laughs> we love just staying here. We love being with family. Um, I love that my mother-in-law is right here. The kids climb into bed with her in the morning. Um, so yeah, this is just, it's just home. Um, we love these linens. This is um, Amalia, which is like a brand I just found. And it is like, they're incredibly soft. Um, they have like, a lot of them have a modern touch. This one's like, you know, goes really well in this house. And it's just, you know, sharing this with the kids too. It's like multi-generational, right? Like they love this doll in the corner with the, the little notes and the money on it. And it, you know, it's just, I think it's been here forever since Otzi was here. And kind of the, someone's like, thank you note is here. Someone put a dollar. At some point, somebody put fake nails on it. I mean, it's just one of those things that like kind of has grown over time um, and it's sort of become a fixture poems that Nick have, have written that I highly recommend you do not zoom in on because it's really, really bad. But um, it's just fun because then the kids get to see all of this stuff and see all the memories. I think people are so quick to get rid of everything old and then sort of the history is gone. And I think we love, I mean, I love history and, I, and familial history, but also, you know, kind of the world. And I think um, houses like this just kind of aren't around anymore. Everybody wants everything perfect, no stains. And you know, this house is lived in. So once again, the perfect opportunity to plug my book. <laughs> it's um, like you put one in every room, I'm assuming? <laughs> this is it without its uh, jacket on. And as you can see, it matches uh, the uh, couch and the bed. And as you'll see, the bathroom. Um, and it, uh, yeah, when I was looking for uh, jackets, I just, uh, I thought this was a really cool kind of fun, fun print. So I love a good bathroom. My favorite rooms to photograph are actually bathrooms and kitchens. He does, loves a good bathtub. <laughs> and I do love a good bathtub. Um, but uh, I just think this wallpaper is amazing. Um, and the fact that it's lasted this long, I think this has been here since my grandmother. I usually, when the kids are screaming, I lock myself in, turn the shower on with a popsicle and I'm like, I'm taking a shower. And I just eat a popsicle for 20 minutes alone, you know, because that's what moms have to do to survive. Yeah. We don't give her a lot of alone time. No, so. this is for sure. So this was my mom's uh, artist studio, painting studio. Um, originally it was a bedroom, uh, yeah. but when you moved in, you turned it into your studio. And now uh, during the summers, I take it over as my office where I yeah. edit photos and, and do, do whatnot. But this is one of my favorite rooms. Um, love this room. I love the curtains. I feel like that it's just, it's a lot of colors that I wouldn't think go together, but, but re end up working really well. Essentially, you bring it all in and cross your fingers that it actually works, <laughs> even if it doesn't. <laughs> Furniture has to be comfortable. You have to be able to lie down and read a book or sink into a big chair and read a book. Anything that you can read a book in, basically. <laughs> uh, that's the key for me. So this is my bedroom, um, and it, I might add it's about to be redone, so don't pay too much attention to all the differing fabrics um, and the very old carpet. Uh, it uh, was originally, Nick is very mad at me because it was painted black, and it was really a beautiful, it was sort of a showcase room with lots of wonderful old shell furniture and Chinese lacquer. and pretty fabulous but I have a thing about light so I the first thing I did was painted it white and he's really not happy with me um, and it's just a, you know it's a, a little bit of of everything you know more of little boxes I have my feather collection over here um, on on this table all my feathers I've collected over the years I have a large crystal collection which is all inside that cabinet. Why do you collect feathers? I don't know I just think they're beautiful. It's just a little bit of everything and um, a little bit less of everything than this morning because don't open the closets. <laughs> Nick made me clean it up. <laughs> so, 
Um, but I love this room, again, because of the light and, and the amazing view. I mean, it looks right down uh, to the ocean and into the garden. Here's the whole family. Mm. <laughs> so this is um, Archer, and Archer is four. And Johnny, turn around. Johnny is seven. And uh, this is one of our first summers staying here. So now they're both so big, they can share this room together. Um, and it's sort of, you know, it's very sweet that they can, they get to spend a lot of time together here. We, and we try not to mess up the rest of the house. So this is like the kid's space where we have snacks and all the books. We have toys up here. And I think my favorite thing about the, about uh, the room is that I, um, I have good space to like the bed. Because I usually watch a lot of YouTube on that. <laughs> and we're going to be on YouTube. Archer, can you look at the camera and say your name? Hey, you. Hey, you. <laughs> okay, we'll say, let's go on the golf cart. Let's go on the golf cart. Okay. Maybe that didn't work. So this is my probably my favorite part of the whole house. This is the property because um, my mother designed this garden, and it really was, it's a fabulous garden. Um, it, it's uh, actually in the Smithsonian plants for the garden. Um, so it's, it was considered one of the premier gardens in the United States. I think this is the, the best part in the summer. So lots of family and kids. And this is the, um, it's a gardening shed. And this is a rose, a climbing rose called Miss Newport. And for years, nobody knew what it was because it seemed to be unique to this property, this particular strain. And uh, so it was eventually named Miss Newport. It used to grow practically nowhere else but on this property. Basically, no Newport house is complete without hydrangeas. It's the one thing I always associate with summertime. And I was really shocked when I went to New Zealand some years ago that they consider hydrangeas weeds there. I was stunned. <laughs> But I, these, I just love them. I like anything blue in the garden. A lot of the plants are new this year in this garden, so they all look a little unformed um, because it got a little out of hand last summer and I had to pull a lot of things out, but it's really gonna be spectacular when they all grow in. This is the gate between the two houses which I left there because we can still walk back and forth to see our neighbors. And this is beautiful cra grasses in the summer when you see the heron coming out and the grasses blowing and it's really lovely, but it's, it's still early, so nothing's really grown yet. That's the Temple of Doom. My mother found it at a garden show years ago and um, didn't buy it and then her landscaper gave it to her as a present. And it used to have a, a top. Anyway, the installation, everything turned into the singular most expensive folly on the face of the planet. So we named it the Temple of Doom. In the bushes over here, and we'll walk closer so you get a better shot, is um, a head of Angela Davis that my mother absolutely loved and had shipped back from Poland in the early 70s. And it's got, you know, peace and love and everything all carved into her head. But I love this piece. This is probably my favorite thing on the property. And it used to, I need to move it again. It used to sit further out in the lawn. Well, I think for me, Newport is a very cool place. And unlike a lot of other summer communities, because it's very um, family oriented, the same families have been in the same houses for generations. And, you know, the same people that my grandmother was friends with, my mother was friends with their, their kids, and I'm friends with their kids, and our kids are growing up together. Um, so in a lot of ways, no matter where uh, I, I move to or live, coming back for the summers really is like coming back home. Yeah, I've always thought of it, Newport as home too, even though I grew up in Washington and have lived lots of other places. For me, it's just total relaxation and um, I, I just 
stay at home a lot, frankly, and enjoy my garden and my house. And I don't go to a lot of the big parties and I fly under the radar. I get a real sense of peace, you know, and uh, happy times. And, you know, f family, children, picnics, you know, the typical idyllic summer. <laughs> I'm grateful every day for this view. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.